Greetings everyone, welcome to video number 17 in the project management series presented by Process Geekoid. Today's agenda will be going over reviewing the PEMBOK process table as well as the 14th process which is the define activities process. This process occurs at the intersection of the time or schedule knowledge area and the planning process group. As always, please subscribe, like, and comment. So let's move forward. So after having a general plan in place for managing the schedule or timeline, the next step is to now take our scope baseline, specifically the WBS work breakdown structure component, which we have done at the last step of scope planning right here, and break it down to a work package. Remember the work package is the lowest level of the WBS and it's tied to a specific control account. And remember a control account is a specific management control point where we can tie the schedule and cost to. The work packages can now be further broken down or decomposed into activities. Eventually the activities can now be estimated for time and cost. This will indirectly tie to estimate activity duration process as well as estimate activity resources and estimate cost processes. The define activities process is used to identify and document specific actions to be performed to produce project deliverables. Now this can be a product, service, or result. The key benefit of the define activities process is to decompose the work packages in the work breakdown structure or WBS into a list of several activities which are now used as a basis for estimating, scheduling, executing, monitoring, and controlling the project work. This will assist in efficiently producing project deliverables, product, service, or result for the end client. Now, the ITTOs, inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs for defined activities are as follows. For inputs, we have schedule management plan, scope baseline, remember it consists of the scope statement, WBS and WBS dictionary. Next we have EEFs, which are enterprise environmental factors, factors that are not in the control of the project team that influence, constrain, or direct a project. Examples of EEFs are organizational culture or structure, published information, industry standards, project information systems, and basically these systems help disseminate information such as a task list to relevant stakeholders that's not in your control. So for example, an organization might use Artemis or MS Project or SharePoint as a tool, as a PMIS, and uh, also you have uh, government regulations which are examples of EEFs which are out of the project team's control we just have to comply to those next input is OPAs organizational process assets these are formal or informal internal policies procedures lessons learned from pre previous projects standardized processes and activity list templates and within the OPAs, we can also have um, lessons learned. That's really important. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between an EEF and OPA is typically on the PMP exam is lessons learned is usually the key word in figuring out which, which is the difference between EEF and OPA. So EEFs, simply put, are things outside of the project team's control and easily you can see by organizational culture or industry standards or government regulations are the three big ones for EEFs. Now for tools, we have decomposition. Each work category and subcategory within the WBS is decomposed into work packages. Work packages are the lowest level of the WBS. So remember a precursor to a work package is a planning package where we have known work content but no detailed schedule activities. Now decomposition will involve team members in the decomposition and can lead to a better and more accurate result in estimation. 
Next tool and technique is rolling wave planning. It is an iterative planning technique in which the work is to be accomplished in the near term is planned in detail, while the work in the future is planned at a higher level. And we use to be determined as a placeholder to add more detail as we know in the future. This is really similar to the scrum planning and sprint planning where we plan, we take an epic, break it down to a user story, and take each, each user story and estimate using planning poker. And rolling wave planning is a form of progressive elaboration. This indirectly ties to the direction or definition of a project. Remember, a project is a temporary endeavor to deliver a specific product, service, or result that operates within constraints of time, cost, scope, risk, and resources, and is progressively elaborated. So rolling wave planning helps fulfill the progressive elaboration piece. So the rolling wave planning technique is done early on during strategic planning when information is less defined and work packages may be decomposed to known level of detail without scheduled information. This is a planning package. Now as more information is learned throughout the project, schedule and work related details are collected and the planning packages can now become a work package. The work package is broken down to individual activities via decomposition. Once again, the work package is the lowest level of the WBS. Next, the outputs. We have activity list. These are the list of activities or actions taken to meet in creating deliverables for the project. Another output is the activity attribute. Attributes are the descriptive components of each activity for each scheduled activity in the activity list. This could include the activity codes, list of predecessor activities, successor activities, logical relationships, leads and lags, resource requirements, imposed dates, constraints, and assumptions. It could also include risks. So this piece right here ties into the scope statement in some form because we do have risks, assumptions, and constraints, and those are all part of the activity attributes. Also, we have milestone list. It is a list of project milestones. Basically, it is a activity that has a scheduled activity duration of zero. It is basically at a time of point in the project. So for example, if you are in a data migration project, Reaching a milestone is basically that milestone in time. So if you reached clean data before reaching a staging table, the clean data is a milestone. Once that milestone is reached, you want to go and work towards your next milestone, which is putting it into your staging tables. That will be your next milestone. Once you go from staging to production, production is your next milestone. So going from one step to the next is like a milestone. That's why you need to have the list milestone list to make sure that you know that you are hitting the milestones so you can accurately report to management where you are in the project. The key benefit of this process is to break down the work packages into activities that provide a basis for estimating, scheduling, executing, monitoring, and controlling the project work. This is the essence of defined activities. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment.